morning everyone and welcome welcome to Natik in Oak Grove, California and NatikYarns.com coming to you live on a nice cool spring day. We are a couple minutes late because the phone decided to hate me again and not be posting the video to the correct place so we are starting over and it's working now. Yay! Because I can see it so that's a good sign. Um, so we've got some nice spring weather again. It rained a little last night. Some people heard it, some people didn't. <laughs> I swear, whatever rain I get at my house must be the leftovers from what Elk Grove gets because it's <laughs> never raining as hard at my house as everybody down here is like, it rained so hard it woke me up. And I'm like, it barely rained. What are you people talking about? Like, what? Like, my patio is wet, but not puddled. It puddled. was, it, we had puddles. Good morning. Thank you, everyone. I just got it chopped off yesterday. It was time. It was time for the warm weather cut. <laughs> Good morning. So this morning we are not going to talk about the grand prize because Boss Lady is going to be giving it away tomorrow. Oh, we get to find out. Hopefully. Finally. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully there's not a troublemaker that wins it and is like, uh -huh. no, no, I want to open it. Uh -huh. it to me. Like, oh, man. Because <laughs> we want to know. Yeah. So tomorrow we will do the grand prize drawing that was for April. And then probably on Thursday we'll reveal what the next one is going to be. So don't worry. We haven't forgotten. We're just <laughs> letting Boss Lady do the honors. So then we will move on to today's daily prize, which is one like half of the beautifully soft moonshine fine which is a super soft sport weight alpaca blend that is 30% baby alpaca 30 wool 25 nylon and 15 silk the full skein is 437 yards so at a half skein you have enough to make the small or medium size of this crochet cowl Very easy, fun pattern. This is a great one if you're a beginner crocheter looking to build your skills, or if you're just like, you know what, I just want a instant gratification, easy project. It makes this fun little kind of pennant triangle design in the lace detail, and it works up super quick because it's mostly lacy. I really do like crochet. I don't know why I don't do more. I don't know, but we should work on that. I know, right? This would be a good practice piece for me because, yeah, I need to up my skills. Yeah, I just saw a ridiculously cute crochet poncho yesterday that I was like, mm, I'm just going to add that to the queue. Was it black and white and ziggity zag uh -huh. with color? I with love that one. Yes. I'll... on either end and it was designed it's, yeah. so you could either wear it with the stripes going this way. Or the way I liked it was the stripes going vertical and then you had the color all out yeah. here on the yeah. edges instead of down here on the bottom. So I was like... It's really cute. I know. I almost sent it to you, and I'm like, no, neither one of us has time. Right? So, like, spare time is where, especially since a certain sweater that's supposed to be a four day knit along is now in the queue. Mm hmm. Like, you might not put that first. That one's kind of speaking at me, and I'm like, I no. I <laughs> you printed it. Already. <laughs> I, I looked at it. So, stay tuned because I can't tell you anything about it yet but it's coming. It's it's so cute. But I've got a chop chop on knitting. Yeah, you do. So <laughs> we'll just move right along to today's daily prize and how you get entered. So entries for our daily prizes are based on interactions with our videos. So if you react to the video with any of these little lovelies down here, then you're gonna get one entry per reaction. If you comment on the video, you can always use these little shortcuts of, you know, clicking the button. I actually got them today. Normally I get oh. left out of those, even though it's my account every day, whatever. Um, and then you get five entries per comment. And then if you want a lot of entries for minimal effort, just share the video to your friends, to your stories, and wherever you share, just come back to the video and comment shared to and where 
and then you will get 11 entries per share. Did you see Kathy's comment? Collect it for retirement. Oh, yeah. yeah. The projects? Yeah, that's yeah. I got a queue to last me into my afterlife, okay? Yeah. I'm going to be the knitting ghost. <laughs> and, yeah, Darla, I'm not doing it in four days either. It's never truly a four-day sweater. That's why I did air quotes. I think what the designer did it because she was on vacation. Yeah. In four it days. It started as a challenge for herself. And then just became kind of this fun thing that she does every year. But there's no expectation to do it in four days. Hold on, this doesn't look right. Vicki, we are in Elk Grove, California, which is a suburb of Sacramento. About in the middle of the state-ish. We're a little north, I think. Yeah, we're technically northern California, although I feel like they should actually have us have northern, central, and southern. Because we're yeah. too long for just northern and southern, southern. There, there, there's three parts to the state the middle is very different from the most north part and the most south part so i'm just saying we need to have we're central california we get our own zone fresno's part of that central california right like because to me that's central but that's where i grew up so that was what i was familiar with so but sacramento doesn't feel north to me yeah, like I've lived in northern, northern California, yeah. and it's different. It's very different. All right. Sorry, the thing was being non cooperative, ah, okay. so I had to smack it around a little. So let's see who our lucky winner is based off of Saturday's video, which was OAS Day. Whoa, Carolyn Sanchez. It's Congratulations, like it was. Congratulations, Carolyn. It was meant to be. Carolyn is an excellent crochet person. Oh, you should probably do this. I know. She'll probably do it in a half an hour. And I'm still on wait. How do I do what? <laughs> Carolyn, we know you're local, so next time you come in the boutique, let us know you have a prize, and we will get it from the cabinet. If you win and you're not local, let us know next time you make a purchase that you have a prize, and we will include it in your package. Lots of good mornings this morning. If you guys are doing gift knitting, these little single size soak packets are awesome. I oh. like how they like included them in the Bandulish also. Oh yeah, let's take a quick peek here. This is the cactus shawl. It is on Ravelry and these are the kits. So you get the soak package, you get that little see-through marker, the pattern, two skeins of yarn, well skein and a half skein. And those are the three colors we have left. This was a super fun knit. It's kind of basket weave-esque. And then just a little bit of color change, a little teeny bit of lace. Super fun to do. What? All right, Facebook has lost its ever-loving mind. Uh-oh, what did it do? It called oh. our post about, I'm just going to show you guys this, because what, it you... called our post about our crochet cowl nudity. What? What? Well, Carolyn, you want a very exciting pattern called Guidon. I'm like, the pattern <laughs> literally is, um, like the name is another word for pennant or flag. Why? That picture is of someone's face. It's never. Who? Oh. Someone reported it. I must be on. She said that means someone reported it. Who reports that as the people? Hopefully it was an accident. I'm clicking on my friends because that's just weird. Like, excuse me. What? <laughs> right, Karen? FB is nuts. Okay, well. If you want to see it for yourself, it's on Ravelry, but I, trust me, it's a decent, awesome pattern. Yeah, I'm like, that's ridiculousness. So let's just move on to talking about some pretty yarn, because that was weird. That was a weird thing. That's our weirdness for the day. But um, we have this beautiful new collection of colors of the Noro Akari, which is a silk 
cotton viscose mohair wool in polyamide blend and I'll tell you guys normally if it says mohair that means Anna can't use it but this one I don't know if it's that it's only 14% or if they used some extra well pampered mohair goats <laughs> but it does not bother me I have crocheted with it and it did not start to make my hands hot which it normally would so this yarn super soft and amazing and you're welcome Darla I know right I'm like this you, you might like this color Darla yeah so this first gorgeous color well first hold on it is 480 meters so that's about 528 yards of worsted weight yarn it is what I'd consider a light worsted they say a gauge range of 22 to 24 stitches in knitting and 18 to 20 in crochet. But this beautiful color is color number 35. I'm just gonna move the tag out of the way so you guys can see how beautiful this color is. You have kind of more sprucey greens that are more the blue green, a forest green, this beautiful springy lime, some taupe and chocolate and caramel, a pretty kind of plum violet, some denim and cornflower blue, some navy. Like the colors just keep going. So pretty. What was the color number? This one is color number 35. Three, five. I feel like a bingo. <laughs> caller? What do you call a bingo person? A bingo caller? Right. I don't it know. Sounds, I don't know. Caller sounds weird. So I'm like, yeah. somebody, an announcer doesn't sound right. It's like, what? what's a bingo number shout out or person called? If it is caller, at least it's spelled with an E-R. Not an A-R. Oh. Yeah, not like, <laughs> right, a, which, not like a not like a pet collar, which is what I hear. But I I'm like, no short collar. What? I'm a I'm a dog person. What can I say? <laughs> oh <laughs> well, at least we're entertaining you guys. Bin a was that binger or binger? <laughs> oh, there was right, well, now that uh, we've broken Susan. Mm, we'll move on binger. to this gorgeous color of color thirty six, which is like happy sunshine in a ball. You've got this really pretty chocolate espresso color into, it kind of turns as it blends with the orange, a little butterscotch to the creamsicle orange. This, I love the way they blend their colors because somehow the orange to the like lime olive green doesn't turn icky. It just has this beautiful transition between the two colors. I think because the yarn is dry when they spin it, yeah, and they, they dye it separately. Yeah, so. like they're blending the already dyed colors together, and so it makes this beautiful blend of orange and green together instead of making mud, because nobody likes mud. Then we have this gorgeous sunflower yellow to this, like, soft white there's almost the slightest hint of like a mint green in the white I don't know if it shows up on camera when you say you it I can see it and then it goes into this kind of taupey gray and then back into the browns that is color number 36 oh yes Noro definitely knows how to do colors so that was 35 and 36 and boy, have I got some fun patterns for you guys this morning. I have a love-hate relationship with dual length engine and <laughs> talking because I end up finding all these patterns I want to make. That is the danger of Ravelry. When Susan does it, I only get to see like half tiny, of what a she tiny clicks portion, on. <laughs> tiny portion, half of what she clicks on, maybe. So here's a super cute, like kind oh, of Ruana style sweater called Layla. 
It has this really pretty, like they used a Kari for the body and then you pick up with a contrast color and do the collar and the bottom bands in a solid. So I'm thinking like Kashi Ruguru for mm -hmm. the edges. And you just pick a color that coordinates with one of the shades in your Akari, which you guys, I would be more than happy to help you pick your contrast colors. The striping is on the back as well. So you've got kind of this color block effect and the striping. And what you can kind of see here because there's a triangular shape to the color block. Is there some short rows in there? Nothing too crazy, but that is what makes it lay really nicely on her shoulders and not be this like falling off oversized craziness. Like it sits super cute. That looks so cozy. You could just wrap up in it. Right? Like I love this kind of style of cardigan because if you're somewhere cold, you can always, you know, kind of spread it out as a blanket in your lap almost. So it multitasks. And they clearly understand the assignment of being inclusive because they have a size range from 37 to 72 and a half. I'm going to guess that they recommend like around four to six inches of positive ease. We'll see if they say. Oh yeah, five to 10. I was close. So they're recommending it be pretty oversized, but you don't have to do that. Like for me, I tend to go in the three to four inches is the ideal range, even on a cardigan. You just want, you don't want your cardigan equal to or smaller than you because that's when they frame things instead of lay over them. And this one, let's see if she has the yardage breakdown. Yeah. So the Basically all but like the last two sizes can be done with two skeins of the Akari. That's this version here. Go down. Oh, look even better. Self-striping version. So one skein up through the third size, two skeins up through seven, like the seventh size, and then three and then probably, oh no wait, that's the solid color. Yeah. Um, they're throwing me off because to me that's the main color so that would have been listed first, um, but not in this case. So one, two, one to two skeins. I think of the stripe as the main color because that's the yeah. body and that's... So to me the main color should be listed first. Oh, they did put, yeah, I see what you mean. The solid is the contrast color that should be right. listed second, but they called it MC, main color. I'm like, no. We'll just go self, <laughs> self striping and solid. I'm judging them. I am judging them for their choices because I can. All right, then we have the Scarfy Scarf by Susan Ashcroft. Cute. Really fun, easy. Like, this is your therapy knitting. Like, you can see it's in the solid color. It's just this really simple knit pearl texture, nothing too crazy. But this is like your take everywhere, car knitting, waiting for people at the doctor's office, DMV, anywhere where you have to sit and wait. Cause it's like a four row repeat. And I'm guessing one of them is all, at least one of them is all knit. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a very easy one to pick up where you left off. And one skein will make a gorgeous scarf. It is very pretty. This one. Is that this one? No. I don't think so. Hmm. Could be. It could just be the colors are off a little bit on the camera. All right, one more. The Ooh, Wrinkle by Laura Ayler. Laura Ayler has lots of really good patterns. If you want something that's a little bit pay attention, but not much. Like this is just going to have pay attention to where the center is and whether you're on the right side or the wrong side. It's just garter stitch, but it's got that same fun kite shape as a certain OIS day pattern that has this little center double decrease down the middle. So you're getting this really cool like arrowhead look to your self striping yarn. And this one, she says sizes available custom, which I'm guessing means we can probably easily do a one skein version. 
Probably stop when you run out of yarn. The one shown is a two skein version, but there would be options to adjust it because she literally says custom size. Yeah. So if you like this nice big one, two skeins. Otherwise, it can be manipulated to be one. Oh yeah, Darla liked the idea of doing sweaters with 35 and 36. You could do those two together in something. Mm -hmm. Then we have 34. This is for people who like either kind of that like turquoise vibes or a day at the beach. Definitely. It has this beautiful like slightly aqua to cerulean sky blue then it goes a little more teal i just have to move the tag out of the way every time then the teal starts to blend into this soft sand color into more of a chocolate to this like rhubarb red your color names are always so exciting my mind is like X, Y, Z, done. You're like, it has blue and brown. It's blue, brown, red, gray. I mean, you know, like yours is so much more exciting. <laughs> so that is 34. Ooh, that one's pretty. Then for the Danielle color palette, people of the world, we have 33 which has this beautiful, we're just gonna start right here, this orchid pink purple into more of a cranberry that shifts into like a soft white. The soft white has then has this beautiful teal, like muted teal gray green, navy blue, this little bit of like Ooh. a lilac color right there. Pretty, pretty. That is color 33. Let's see. I've got more patterns to show and link for you guys. This will be fun to take a photo of for YouTube. Oh, yes. Such pretty colors. Color palette is amazing. Super spring summery palette in the whole line. Okay, I love this sweater. This is super cute. This has Susan Knit the Sweater vibes. Yeah, just a bit. Oh, this it's... is Rumo. It has short rows. These little <laughs> edges. These little lines kind of yeah. ending into one another. That's how I know. Sure short enough. Rows. And it's side to side. I like side to side sweaters. Because it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same as knitting a sweater. Mm-mm. And the fun thing with ones like this, a lot of times, I don't know if this one does, but a lot of times you knit the sleeve first, so it's, you get it's, rid of sleeve island a lot faster. It's I know a pickup it sleeve, be, or is it or the sleeve is... In. Let's see. Let's see what they're up to. Or it usually could be that... these tags will give you set in sleeve, so that usually means seamed in. Sometimes it means picked up. Instructions sideways and modular pieces. Knit from the sides towards the center. Sleeves are knit in the round and set in, so they are sewn in after the fact. Yeah, I'd be knitting that flat and sewing it. Yeah, it's easier to seam in a sleeve if it's not circular yet. You can do it, but it's easier if it's flat. For your seaming people's sanity, do it flat. <laughs> If you want us to do it, please knit your sweater flat. We'd rather just do one more seam than argue with the circular construction. And this one has a great size range as well from a 30 to a 53. And as you can see by all of her beautiful pictures, it pairs very nicely with a self-striping yarn because you get vertical stripes out of it. As we all know, vertical stripes are the most flattering. 
Hmm. Might have a sweater in my future. Ooh. Japanese landscape also has Susan vibes because, again, short rows. Mm -hmm. You can really see it in this version, which is clearly Silk Garden by how colorful it is. But it's got this really fun short row wedge pattern with these little mesh lace details. Like, where's a good picture of the lace? Ooh, this one that is clearly out of Akari. You can see like these little elongated lace details. I'm guessing they're drop stitches. Cause yeah, I'm like, like how'd they do that? And then drop the stitch. Cause how do you, how'd they make a hole that big? Hmm. It's long and skinny. This is one of those that we just have to do so that we know how to do it. Right. Cause there's not a close up enough to tell, but this one, you could easily do a one skein size with this. Cause it's the yarn is little over 500 yards and look 492. That is the Japanese landscape by Susan Ashcroft. One more. You're killing me today. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. This is Mooley grass. I don't know if I'm <laughs> pronouncing that correctly, but I could see your sister wanting this one too. Yeah. Because she gets cold in the office but this is literally a rectangle seamed together on one side you guys so this is your therapy knitting at its finest a little stockinette stitch with some garter ridges just you when you fringe it or not you don't have to fringe so the stripes kind of go straight across the back and then diagonal in the front One skein. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I have more colors. Thank you, Claudia. I'm thinking I have some viola in my stash. I heard veal. Viola. And was like, that doesn't make sense. I have voila in my stash. Voila makes sense, actually. I'm like, you have, no. No, I don't do okay. the other one. <laughs> 32 is like a trip to the ice cream store in a scan. Darla. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. I'm so grateful because I hear things wrong all the time. I don't know. Viola. The little translator fish in my brain does not work right half the time. It, <laughs> it, it hears things. Darla, it's viola, I promise. <laughs> so, this gorgeous color, 32, sherbet orange, lemon yellow, spring green, kind of a serling sky blue. Violet navy, some like plum chocolate, like there's the brown, but there's a little bit of a purple tint to it. Some taupe and cream. There's some raspberry pink right here. Some rust. Can we call this one a spring party in this game? I was calling it the ice cream store. That too. <laughs> it's a spring fling. Spring fling ice cream store. There we go. Yeah. Okay, somebody start that up near where we can walk. <laughs> 32. 32 is the gorgeous springy goodness color. How do they keep getting prettier? I don't know. I didn't intentionally save technically the best for last. I lined them up in numerical order. That's when Are you okay? Who are you? How do you rainbow this? You'll figure it out. <laughs> like they are each their own little rainbows, so I couldn't figure out how to rainbow it. So, numerical order it is. Color 29 is kind of more your fall palette, but still just bright enough to be summery. Uh, you have kind of that rusty red, chocolate, cinnamon, Sunflower yellow mixed with cream, some sagey green, some mint green. 
Like it's very summer sunset. Summer in the park. Right. A cool summer evening. How about that? Lately, it's almost like the side of the road because this looks like mm, little yeah. California poppies that are popping up everywhere. Because I don't know if everybody knows this. Do, do you know it's illegal to pick those? Yes, I knew that. You can't dig them up. You can't move them. You can't. Like you can plant some in your yard, and then you can move those around all you want. But the ones on the side of the road, no touchy. I mean. I don't know how often anybody gets caught doing it. Right, but, but... You're not supposed to. I say if you like them, go out there with a packet of seeds and add some more. Yeah, just plant them. They have them at, like, every store that sells seeds. Mm-hmm. They even had them at the stores that sold seeds in Montana, and they don't really fit really? the growing season there. Wow. Not really the season for... The season's not long enough for poppies. Yeah. Or wet enough. Poppies like rain. All right, more projects for you guys. This is perfect process. This is another Susan, Susan Ashcroft. She clearly likes <laughs> Doro. Really fun, like, garter stitch triangle with then this little easy Fijo lace border on the side and at the end. Like, this is a solid color one, but you can see that garter stitch triangle in the middle. So kind of every row for a majority of the shawl, you have, like, Knit, 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 pay attention for a little bit. Then pay attention for a little bit, knit, knit, knit. So you get little breaks from the pay attention. But it's really pretty in Noro because then it just gives it a little more excitement to an otherwise kind of more classic style shawl. And this one, one skein. That's pretty good. Right? a lot of yardage on these. That is perfect process. Then for the lace knitters, we have the Fei Wing shawl. You're welcome, Susan. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's really pretty in this like ombre gray color that they used originally, but mm. look at it in Akari. Wow. Like, it does all the striping for you. You don't have to change anything. You just enjoy the beautiful lace design. And I love that they have it like this one kind of, like, flower pattern lace throughout and then a little chevron at the end. So about the time that I'm like, if I knit this pattern one more time, <laughs> it's going in the UFO pile, they moved on. And I really appreciate that because I like it when they move on. It gives me something to work towards, too. Right. Oh, there's a different section coming because I get easily distracted. But this is what I mean by flower pattern. Like, look, there's a little flower there. There's a little flower there. If, and little flowers. If you've done February Lady Sweater, you can do this. Yeah, this is easy to lace. Like, if you've never done lace, like the word lace scares you, this would be a good choice. Also because it starts at a little tiny triangle and gets bigger. So you get to do short sections of lace way over here and get the hang of it before you have to do a whole big long row of it. And that one also one skein and it's a free pattern. Nice. That is the Fay Wing Shawl. We'll just add that to our library just in case Susan wants to knit that later. <sighs> yeah. Add to my list. All right, one more, and then I have more colors. This one I had to show you the project first because the pattern is pretty, but this was like, uh, it's gorgeous. You've got this fun, like, interrupted rib pattern, some eyelets, and then this beautiful, like, cathedral lace border. But it's garter stitch lace, which is super easy. And an I-cord bind off. But it's Grier by uh, Isabel oh, Kramer. That's which, funny. While it's beautiful, it's way more exciting in the Noro. Because this they used like three colors and that... ombre them together. We're and then so... I think that gal must have added that. Yeah. Because I'm like, where's the border? Because that's what made it. Hopefully she says where she got it from. 
Oh, here we go. Incorporated the ribby tile pattern in the color B blue section. So if you love this, you just have to get both patterns, Grier and ribby tile. We'll go look at ribby tile real quick. Ribby tile. Yep. Oh, well, that's not the border. No, that's the body that's in the blue the color. All right, this girl went totally rogue on us. So the last section, switch back to mauve and the beeswax scarf pattern. Hmm. At least she made notes so you guys could replicate this if you wanted to, because then you would just go and get the beeswax scarf. Ah, uh, yes. yeah, there we go. There's that beautiful lace. I appreciate when they make notes because I'm like, wait a minute, where'd this mm -hmm. beautifulness come from? There we go. You could just do this scarf out of a Kari and it would be gorgeous. Yeah. We'll link that one for you guys as I go back to the beautiful colors because we had to have a rogue moment there. Beverly, you want all of these patterns? That if can... you miss any while we're linking as we go, because I am popping them in after the video, don't expect it in the next 10 minutes kind of thing, but give Susan like half an hour or so after the video, they will be in the collective as well. I'm sorry, I cannot do all three places at once. My <laughs> brain cannot keep up with that many things. All right, color 20. This seems like one your sister would want. Probably, I want it too. It has some of that kind of orchid pink and like a pretty soft bubblegum pink. This like creamsicle orange to kind of a <laughs> orange caramel. There's some silver gray and then this darker taupe gray that has little viol soft violet highlights. There's some lemon yellow in there. Color 20 is happy spring in a skein. I like that. It wouldn't be a live session yeah. if you didn't have a squirrel moment. I need to go cast on for something. Stay. Stay. I'm just going to pet it until I can. Susan's trying to take the yarn again. I, I just moved it with its friends. It's hard to get all this in one picture. Right, that's going to be the tricky part of getting your video picture prepped is fitting uh, them all. I might have to stand on the ladder. We do do that, you guys. The things we do to make <laughs> to get... everything beautiful for you guys. It's crazy. Stand on ladders to take pictures. Do photography when it's freezing. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Color 19 is this beautiful like blue green purple palette but it has like this bonus warm color palette too so you've got the violet and the sky blue you've got lime green and the citrusy orange some caramel some cream between the colors Like this is mostly the cool tone half of the rainbow, but then there's a little pop of orange in there that brings it a little warmth. Anybody have a favorite? Yeah, they are soft colors. So yeah, pretty. Kari is a very soft palette of colors, very kind of spring summer vibes. It is, for anybody just joining, about 525 yards a skein of silk, cotton, viscose, mohair, wool, and polyamide. That 26% silk makes it absolutely amazing. All of them, right, Claudia? I'm with you. It'd be a hard choice. Right. This is another good, like, lace scares me. Wow. but I want to do it anyways project. This is Angela. It's a big crescent shawl. Like, I like this picture because you can see the sh overall shape of it with a kind of simple leafy lace border. Where's this one? Should be closer up over the border. 
And then, so you actually, on patterns like this, you do this part first, and then you pick up and do your short rows across the top. I appreciate this because a lot of patterns leave this off. They did some ribbing at the top so that it wouldn't be roly poly. I don't think you pick up stitches. I bet those are live. Oh, it could be on this one. Because I bet are. it's bottom up, I think. Yeah, some of them they're pick up because some, some of them have you bind off for some reason. Some of like, them, why? if you do it like a scarf, then you have to pick up. But I think this one's yeah. bottom up. This one hopefully so has pretty. it live right from the get-go because some of them like have you bind off and then go back and re-pick up and like why this is twice as much work now. Yeah. But one skein. Then we have Cape Elizabeth by Alicia Plummer, which this is another one that I'm like, okay, this is cute. Mm-hmm. This is really That's cute. cute. Yeah. Little just kind of Swiss cheese eyelets for the body of it. Oh, fun. And then this little chevron lace border on the side. So this is another one of those easy type ponchos where it's just a rectangle and then it's folded in half and seamed across the shoulder. And oops. What in the weirdness was that? Um, they used two skeins to make Cape Elizabeth by Alicia Plummer. So you can see, I like she shows it different ways to wear it though, like kind of with the points off to the side. So the seam would be down the middle. Like you don't have to just wear them off to one side. You can wear them different ways. All right, one more is the Lace Sleeveless Top, number six, which means it was one of the ones in a Noro magazine. Really cute, like, rippling lace pattern that has little eyelets. Then this, like, this is going to have, like, a yarn over for your increase, probably a knit two together for your decrease, so it makes this little squiggly line. And you can see the pattern still shows up beautifully in the self-striping yarn. And this one has sizes from a 37 to a 61 and three quarters. And is only one to two skeins because no sleeves cuts your yardage down requirement quite a bit. I like no sleeves. Right? No sleeves on me. I don't think that's the words to the song, but... We're going with it. All right, well, this yarn, clearly I was excited about because I am kind of running low on time. So we're gonna switch to the what are we wearing segment of the video, which for those of you who have been following a while, you've seen different iterations of <laughs> the RED sweater by Hinterstein. It is finally done, it is blocked. And this is what I mean about making your cardigan a little bit bigger or equal to you. So this one, if I made it equal to or smaller than me, it does this. And that's a no-go for me. I want mine to not be funky monkey and flaming <laughs> the assets. I want them to be covering or draped open just a little bit. But this is a really fun pattern. You actually start with this back part and do that really beautiful little kind of V wedge. Then you pick up and do these little sections. Pick up and do your sleeves first. So sleeve island is over and done with. Yay. And then knit the body. I'd never knit a sweater this way before and it feels so much faster. I love doing it that it way. So much faster. And even if a sweater is not written to do that way, just do it anyway, you know? Finish your sleeves, and then when you're done with the whole rest of it, you're done. They All right. And then, and this was in Cosette, so for anybody who is in love with this gorgeous color, it is enchanted. Then we have what Susan is wearing. This one is Salt Life Poncho, number one, because I've made two of them plus the shawl version. I'm almost done with. Uh, really you might nice. be addicted. I know. Drapey towel, net, and in around. 
once you get, well, actually the whole thing is in the round. No short rows, just lace. We're shocked at the no short rows, but I'm sure there's some knitters out there going, ooh, I could actually make that then. I did put beads into the second one. It's, it's written for beads on the border, which actually I did not do on mine. And I did not block little pointy bits in it. That's okay. Yeah. We don't always have to be pointy. Nope. All right, you guys. I think that is going to be it. Um, so we will go back to pulling your orders and get ready to open here in about 10 minutes because we open at 11. So we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.